Welcome back to the Patros Review. In this episode, we're looking at the film Trash, which was the second film of the Paul Morrissey, Andy Warhol, Trash uh, uh, Factory uh, trilogy. It was made in 1970. Uh, it's directed and written by Andy um, by Paul Morrissey and produced by Andy Warhol. Now, during the very, very early 1970s, various oddballs and struggling underground artists at Andy Warhol's New York Times Square Collective Factory were on a roll. Their first true attempt to making a real movie, of course still painfully micro-budget and amateurish, Paul Morrissey's debut, Flesh, caused a media sensation, mainly due to having been the first arthouse film in the US to have naked men on screen, as well as the strong LGBT content depicted. Which was not as full on as conservatives would like to claim it out to be, but was still damn controversial for its time. But outside of the shock value, Flesh was still a painfully primitive improvised film with atrocious editing and a clear lack of focus. Despite making himself something of a household name, Paul Morrissey was only just getting started in the filmmaking scene. Flesh was only the warm-up act for what Morrissey saw as a trilogy of satires on the phrase sex, drugs, and rock and roll, which was something that defined the 1960s and 1970s. For Trash, Morrissey wanted to make it something more than just satire on drugs. He wanted to do his best to show people that drugs were something to be avoided at all costs, and the lengths he went to in order to get his point across is undeniably interesting and just as full-on as depictions of drug taking as flesh was in setting up the porno market. Trash is a mostly improvised chronicle of an insignificant, lice infested, hardcore drug addict named Joe Smith. Joe D'Alessandro in one of his most convincing performances. More on that later. He was so wasted from taking a major shitload of drugs in his life that he is unable to get an erection or even care about it. He spends his days just loafing around the place while his wife, played by drag queen Holly Woodlawn, is trying the hardest to get them placed onto warfare so they can get easy money to spend on getting more drugs. While Holly contends of a corrupt welfare investigator who is agreeable to the request, but only if he can take Holly's sparkling red shoes for his collection, well, of course she doesn't seem so keen on that part of the bargain. Joe spends his day trying to score more dope, only to end up being used as a subject of a cruel joke by a rich chick who nearly has him killed by an accidental overdose on New York C Street great smack teaching a much needed lesson the cruel logistics of drug life to a young man who doesn't quite get what he's in for when he wants to score his first drug fist hit, only to wind up on all his shit list. If you thought that flesh was intense for its time, the trash will really shock you out of its comfort zone. Although the film's watchability as a whole is still pr pretty rough going. Morrissey, who had seen enough drug fueled squalor in his days as an amateur filmmaker, was hell bent on showing the ugly side of what drug junkie life was like in the early 1970s, and by what we see on screen, he pretty much succeeded on the display of what is perhaps cinema's most lovingly pathetic drug addict. Joe D'Alessandro is so utterly convincing in his portrayal of a hardcore junkie who is so wasted from his habit that he is literally unflappable and completely unable to get any kind of pleasure from life except for anything that comes out of the syringe. Oh, and by the way, those rubber blast syringes that addicts use at the time look so, un uh, so unnervingly nasty that it's no wonder some of them survived the experience. Those infernal things look so easy to overdose on. Many fans at the time took the performance to be a result of genuine drug addict, even though Alessandro wasn't on anything at the time, and wrote to him imploring him to go sober. Hollywood Lawn made her acting debut in this film and also turns in a strong performance where she plays a ferocious, scourge to welfare investigators, Holly Santiago, with an intensity that will really knock you for six. As for the supporting cast, Jerry Miller looks pretty easy on the eyes, as a go-go dancer, an early former stripper, who likes to practice her routines on a custom-built stage in her house, and tries her best to give Joe some sexual satisfaction only to come up empty-handed. Andrea Feldman, who also makes an acting debut here, is pretty unbalanced, or for anyone who saw her later final performance in Heat in 1972, shortly before she embraced the final destiny by jumping out a window, to find this performance restraint in comparison. If you're wondering why I, gave, why I give Trash a D+, which is a 3 out of 10, while the body of my review makes it look much better, it's because the film, while not a terrible film by any measure, is still pretty rough on to watch. The production values are still pretty woeful, while for Morrissey has built up some minor experience in editing, so the film doesn't look as slipshod as Flesh did. The acting is still pretty hard to take in, but then again, so is meant to be improv theatre at the Destiny for Times Squares, where it's taken the street cheaper theatres, and the Warhol fan club, so that can be slightly forgiven. The film ends up being a disappointment as a serious piece of work, but the slightly better acting of flesh and the stronger message and focus this time around elevates this to being a mediocre piece of work.
Now, there's no bloodshed scene here for the size of those nasty looking rubber blood syringes were shocking harder than, harder than the Ben Cousins doco. Jerry Miller goes full frontal as she does a routine, while Joe Delisandro pretty much repeats his flesh nudity, but this time it's even more repellent to the eyes than before. Now, the DVD was released. I don't have the cover for this. Was released by uh, Cinema Cult Range from Shock Entertainment, which released just about the entire trilogy and also the two horror spoofs that Pomerosi did later. Now, the only extra, and this appears to be a uh, port of the uh, American Image Entertainment release from 2005, and the only extra on it is a documentary called Factory Days, where Paul Morrissey just basically narrates uh, like the life of the factory back in the late 60s, early 70s, to work with the Velvet Underground, how he came to join Andy Warhol, and pretty much explain how Andy Warhol basically had no ideas of his own, and was constantly just having photo opportunities just to gain his name in the paper. Now, the creature in sound quality, uh, it's a 133, 4x3, so it's not widescreen, so if you're a widescreen junkie, this is not the film for you. And the sound is pretty much mono, but the picture looks fairly decent for its age, even you know, though the stock, the film stock at the time was really cheap. And this DVD is pretty, it's not it's not a common DVD, it's a little rare to find, but if you can find it, and if you want to teach your kids about the about the lessons of drug taking, then this would be a good pick, except for this review.